Turn Are you down. ready? Are you ready? Can I talk? Yeah, what's you the mind? answer? Can I, do you mind? I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to That's answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to answer. You're a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> When it comes to Donald Trump, the techniques that he's using are, uh, are very familiar. The idea of uh, putting down the press, uh, calling anybody who speaks against him uh, uh, fake news. For me, this is a guy who doesn't understand what does it mean to be a public servant. Comedian Bassem Youssef tells it like it is. I'm very glad that the president is coming on Monday to come down to Texas for a rally in Houston. Let me say in particular, Don, thank you for your father standing up in the face of that hatred that is directed at President Trump. As we've stated many times, it is Cruz and the like, the enablers, that must also be held accountable. Trump is only part of the problem. The problem is that you have a spineless Republican uh, majority Senate and Congress who basically would go with Trump to any length just to support uh, his agenda. And this is the real threat. What you need is a real opposition in the Senate and real opposition in, the con uh, in Congress. This is how you actually stand up against him. And Youssef puts it more eloquently than I. It is the spineless cowards who bend the knee to Trump and in turn have created this monster. I love everything about Donald Trump. I feel he can be trusted and uh, feel comfortable, and it's peace of mind. And did, did tell, tell me a little bit about what you liked when he was president. What are some of the things he did that you agreed with? I agreed with everything he did. One specific? I can't think on the spot, but everything I'm happy with. <laughs> the jokes almost write themselves, don't they? And he said he... He was talking to the crowd, it's like, if he, if, if Donald Trump didn't do anything other than building the wall, would you still vote for him? Everyone's like, yeah. So this is the whole, this is a whole campaign based on fear and xenophobia. It doesn't matter. Do you think like, so, so when I, when I see like the news cycles going and saying, uh, oh, look, Donald Trump said this, Donald Trump said that, mm, uh, his wife plagiarized this, plagiarized that. Do you think it does, it makes any difference and his supporters? No. Youssef knows it as well as he went out in the field and spoke to Trump supporters like our very own Michael Schur did. So somebody, excuse me, somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. If only more of his base saw through his BS, we'd be in a better place yet. Basically, anybody who is using religion to control you, they, they, they would consider themselves a better Muslims, uh, Christians, Jews than you are. So you have to follow. Um, the, 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 uh, it, it happened in medieval Europe. It happened everywhere. Uh, the, 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 the thing is, uh, yes, it is being hijacked by people, by a group of people who are in power, and they they want to tell people this is the image of Islam. They're taking it away. They're stripping it from its, its spirituality. Over the years, Youssef has tried telling the masses the most authoritarian world leaders will always try and use religion to their benefit. Speaking up, this Bible is the King James version and also includes our founding father documents. Yes, the Constitution. So, is there? irony or a reason for concern over Trump hawking a Bible that includes the Constitution, given that the opening lines of the First Amendment prohibit the government from creating an official religion or favoring one religion. Trump doesn't care because he knows his base and donors don't either. People think that they are safe as long as they are not from certain country or certain religion. But the thing is when discrimination arrives, discrimination doesn't discriminate. It doesn't look at why your ID card. It doesn't look to how many times you pray. Discrimination is a, is a dangerous thing. Even if you're a white American and think that you're privileged, when you have this kind of atmosphere of war, if you speak up into this kind of atmosphere, you're gonna be viewed as unpatriotic, anti-American, and all you also will be, you'll be silenced and you lose that privilege. The, the Patriot Act under Bush didn't just affect immigrants. So in this kind of atmosphere, everybody loses their privilege, not just Arabs or Muslims or immigrants from Middle Eastern. And as Youssef warns, it's only going to get worse. We're backpedaling. Um, the world's laughing at us. Uh, they where, where, where are they laughing at us? I'm, I, like, what do you, where do you think that's happening? China. China's laughing at us. Russia's laughing at us. When Trump is in office, Russia wouldn't even have thought of, go, of invading. 
the neighbor. It is a copy paste of Trumpisms. They parrot his lines. People are just like repeating the same sound bites without even thinking it through. When somebody tells me we want to make the military great again and in the same exact sentence tell me we need to reduce federal spending. I don't know how is how is that possible. And when he tells me like we need to make America great, the military great again, I tell him, how many more countries do you want to invade? Uh, it, 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 it is just like, it doesn't make sense. And yet, in a way, it does, which I'll explain momentarily. Andrea Bernstein writes that the marriage was, quote, the joining of two famous real estate dynasties, each braided into worlds of politics and media and celebrity. She details how those dynasties came to be in the new book, American Oligarchs, The Kushners, The Trumps, and The Marriage of Money and Power. You are having 300 million people in this country and you end up with two parties and you have all of these taxpayers' money and you have more than, what, like 60% of the population not being able to get to uh, participate in the primaries. So is it is it is it changing more to an oligarchy more than a democracy? 1,000% yes. It's like Donald Trump. Remember Donald Trump? He was like one lie after the other one, atrocious statement after the other. By the time you catch up with one, it's already moved on. And you move on and you move on and then you get overwhelmed. Do you think there's anything that the West can do? The West has lost its balls. The West has no balls. They have no courage. A lot to get into. But first, if you can, please do become a channel member. Just go to youtube.com slash TYT sports. Click the join button and support what we do here. And or you can go to TYT.com slash join. In addition, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate the support from every angle that y'all give it. Okay, let's get into this. So what we have seen over the years is Bassem Youssef, who is a figure that our network uh, interviewed back in 2016. He has made whirlwinds after his satirical Piers Morgan interview, which was roughly, I'd say, about three to six months ago. And he has only taken off from there. But this is a guy who, you know, if you're aware of his story, was a former heart surgeon turned political satirist because he did not agree with what was going on in his home country of Egypt, started uploading clips online, gained a ton of traction, had like millions upon millions upon millions of viewers went on the air in Egypt, got kicked off the air in Egypt, uh, moved to the United States and has built a very nice career for himself. You know, I don't even like saying it because he doesn't like hearing it, but many view him as the John Stewart of Egypt. So there you go. They also produced a little documentary together where Stuart followed him for about two years. So check that out if you can as well. There was one thing that he said, which was Trump supporters repeat the same sound bites without even thinking about it. What I have learned through all of these Trump supporter interviews from Michael Schur, Adam Mockler, others that go in the field and interview these people willingly and have a discussion with them willingly is outside of the culture wars, they don't know what's happening. They don't read the bills. They don't see who votes for what. They don't see how many of the people that they look up to actually screw them and stab them in the back metaphorically through the bills that they bring up in Congress and pass. It's all America first. He's a patriot. He loves God. He loves our children. We must protect the children. He is a businessman. So what if he failed? So what if he went bankrupt? You know, however many times it is. That's a part of business. He runs the country like a business. He's a good, faithful man. He's a good Christian man. You know, Vladimir Putin wouldn't have invaded. He would have kept everything under wraps. All of these things, as Youssef puts, and I agree with, are just talking points that Donald Trump has and does and carries over and over again in each interview. They like the fact that he has discredited our institutions. They like the fact that he punches back. He will punch down as much as he will punch up because if that is something that you agree with, punching down, that says a lot about you. Many have said, I think Tom Morello got in hot water for this. If there are are nine schmozzies at a table and one person, one normal person, and he does not leave the table or say anything to branch away from the schmozzies, then you have 10 schmozzies. It says something about the crowd that he attracts and the people that absolutely love him. It just does. Another thing that he said, you have 300 million some people in the country, you end up with two parties, you have all these taxpayers and their money, and you have more than what, like 60% of the population being able to participate in primaries. So isn't it more like an oligarchy than a democracy? One 
thousand percent yes. That is what the system has enabled. That is what those who are at the top 1% want. And they control many in government through legalized bribery. We have talked about this for many years. It is what our network has been built on is that many don't see or care to even go to a source like Open Secrets and see what they vote for, but also why they vote that way when they are forced to go into Congress. You know, God forbid Ted Cruz stops playing basketball for a second and shows up in basketball shorts and a t-shirt. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff from Bassem Youssef and seeing how many don't agree with him for one reason or another is pretty eye-opening. We could parse through some details, but overall pretty spot on.